evening, Free Enterprise fans. I am Muppets in Space, and joining me tonight is somebody I think you'll all know. Please welcome prolific commentator, Vatasia, to the show. Happy to be here, Muppets. So we're starting off with the two of us in this scene, and our key item is the script, which puts us right into go mode. Now, I'm a paladin with some extra white magic skills, and Muppets, you're a... frog. So that's going to make for some really interesting tactics going forward. Should we dip into Barrett in to see who our third party member is, or do you want to head straight to Antlion Cave? Uh, which one of those is covering the play-in matches exactly? Straight to business. I like it. This is going to be a both of us. Rosa and Kane started off with the tower key in hand for this, the first of two play-in matches. The players headed off in different directions after seeing Pelham at the Barrett Inn. Couch got Tella at Mount Hobbs, while Night Dew hacked a loogie at the antlion spot for the Luka key. Eyes and Tayama found Sirens and Fable, but no doubt of a battle against Dark Elf. Couch gave it a shot though and earned a pink tail for his trouble, with Night Dew chasing shortly thereafter. One by one, the racers noped out of Baron Inn once they discovered they'd fight not only Wyvern, but also Kenyatso. Those sirens did eventually prove useful, though, as the players indulged in a bit of a grind before taking on the bosses at the top of Mount Ordeals. Big Dunka was the first through the trio of battles, taking down the Mega Sisters, the Evelyn Royals, and the Water Hag in exchange for the Magna Key. With the underworld open, both Big Dunka and Couch made some omelets for experience. Aizen Teyama's first stop was the land of Summer Monsters, where he found the Darkness Crystal. The scene exploded with possibilities at that point. Big Dunka checked on Yang and got a package from Sheila, which led to Edge in one of the fastest fight versus elements possible. Couch, however, checked out the moon to find a duplicate cane in the Lunar Palace. Night Dude got Cecil and a hook for beating Okapogo and D-Lunars at Dwarf Castle, while Aizen returned to the Baron Inn to pick up Pelham and a life staff. Climbing Babel Tower yielded a pan from the top and the Twin Harp from the Super Cannon, and everyone's favorite musical led to a Bahamut battle and a ribbon. Sheila traded the Baron Key for a pan, and Kenyatso's spot had a rat tail. The Odin spot had an adventure, and the rat tail just got our players a spoon. But where was that crystal? The players began to try Luka Cave, shunting off the moon until they absolutely had no other choice. First Couch, then Night Dew, then Big Dunka all saw the Sand Ruby and immediately noped out to an earlier save. Aizen, on the other hand, decided to take his chances on the moon and started clearing bosses after a quick King Rayu grind. He checked the plague spot, squished the antlion with a well-placed nuke, and was rewarded with the crystal. Less than 10 minutes later, he'd become the first player to beat Zeromus and win a place in the round of 16. Night Dew and Couch were neck and neck after finding their own crystals, and they both secured their spots in the next round only 43 seconds apart. Unfortunately, Big Dunk is finished with 142.37 means he will not be advancing. Ridiculous amounts of hype surrounded the second play-in match, and not only because it featured Zyrak, Dragon Darch, Dusty Griff, and Chokashura, only one of them could progress to the round of 16, and everyone hoped to see some spectacular gambles from them. Scala Kitty's seed didn't disappoint either. It started off with Yang, Rydia, and a ribbon hat. Though a nice piece of equipment, it was no key item, and our players sped off in different directions in order to find something, anything, that would let them make progress. Zyrak was the first to dive Antlion Cave, followed closely by Chokashura. A Yang-on-Yang -yang battle commenced in the depths, and though Zyrak got there first, his dual Charm Claw strategy let Chokashura pull ahead with a win. For his troubles, Chokashura got the pink tail. While Dragon Darch passed on Metella at Mount Hobbs, Chokashura took down some dolls and welcomed the Sage. Though Tella only had his base spells, a Tiara and Runax promised to ease future fights. Elsewhere, Zyrak and Dragon Darch headed for Fabul. Kanazu was no match for them, but the king only had a power robe to pass on to the victors. Baron sold coffins, ironic considering that Palom was hanging out with Bahamut and Mylan's merry gang of ghasts in the Baron Inn. Zyrak took down Bahamut with no problem, but Mylon seemed to have a grudge against Yang that he was determined to see to its grisly end. Dragon Darch, on the other hand, seemed to have no trouble and Mylon was complaining about his body only minutes after starting the fight. Not only did he get Palum, but he also received the Baron Key. Back on Mount Ordeals, Dragon Darch dropped some smashed CPU parts into the deep ravine, 
found a defense sword, and took out the elements. He then settled in to grind out Quake on Palum, while Dusty Griff went on his own pilgrimage to the shrine. Zyrak, however, took an entirely different route. When he encountered the D-Lunars hanging out at the throne, he employed the now-famous Dipwood Lunar Frog Breath Reflect strategy. Moments later, they were down, and he was joined by everyone's favorite mop, Usoya, and every player's least favorite overworld key item, the hook. The others took out Baron and got their hooks, but it was Dragon Darch who dove Eblon Cave first. He found Cecil, beat up some Dark Imps and Ogopogo, and was the first to the underground at 52 minutes. Zyrak's Ogopogo fight wasn't as easy, though. He wiped multiple times, which allowed the others to pass him by. Dusty Griff, in particular, blazed through the battle, having fought one boss no other person had, Golbez in Odin's spot. Starveil strats led to a massive amount of reflected damage, and while he only got a Mazamune as a tangible reward, unlocking Nuke for Fu eased his passage into the underworld. The Leviathan spot yielded a tower key, which led to double value, D-Mist in the cannon room, and the Darkness Crystal behind Plague at the Luge spot. Dragon Darch was the first to cash in on this deal, but Dusty Griff was only seconds behind him. Both found the Rat Tail, and while Dragon Darch went to go check on Yang in the Sylph Cave, Dusty Griff decided to follow that tail, uh, trail, turning in Rat Tail for Magma Key. Still, it was Zyrak who was the first to check on the moon. Little did he know that Dusty Griff was hot on his trail with a freshly matured Rydia. Zyrak augmented his eight key items with an adamant from the Water Hag and the Luka Key from the Dark Elf. But while Zyrak took his double experience buff to a King Ryu grindfest, Dusty Griff kept scouting the boss spots. To everyone's surprise, the crystal was behind the evil wall at the plague spot. Same as last time. After wrecking that mountain of monstrous masonry, Dusty Griff went straight for Zeromus. He'd made it to that point with no wipes, the only one of the competitors to do so. But an early Rydia death didn't seem to bode well for his chances during the Zeromus fight. And at that exact moment, Zyrak was on his way to fight Zeromus too, having finished his grind and found the crystal himself. Though he didn't have Rosa, he had a pair of black mages prepared to nuke Zeromus into next week. The others weren't even close as they battled the final boss, but it was the advantage of a dual healing Zerk strat and a slight head start that won the day for Dusty Griff and a spot in the top 16. And now, here to cover the playoff draft is fellow FE commentator and Sylph extraordinaire, Demery. Thank you for that kind introduction, Patasia. Of course, they would bring in a wind spirit to cover a draft. Uh, <laughs> hmm. So, following the conclusion of the second play-in match, a casual geek Dave and I began a countdown of all 16 players who'd made it to the next round of the Highway to the Zemus Zone League. In order from 16 going down, these are Dusty Griff, Couch 23, Night Dew, Aizen Tayama, El Magus, Scratch Dragon, Supremacy, Penguinator, Swimmy Leone, Invenerable, The Fizz, and Fred Coughlin at 5. After the requisite trash talk, oh, I'm sorry, I mean comments of enthusiasm from those 12 competitors. The top four racers were introduced. Kobahi, Dipwood, Rivers McCown, and Nirm. These four were the ones who were to recruit their opponents for the next few matches. For Team Feymarch, Kobahi took Dusty Griff, Aisen Tayama, and Invenerable. Unsurprisingly, Kobahi took two people from qualifier races and three of the seven people he beat during the league. That said, taking the three runners who have won the three highest important matches in free enterprise history, this could be a risk. For Team Baron, Dipwood took Couch 23, Scratch Dragon, and Swimmy Leone. Dipwood decided on a trio which included two of the six racers he defeated, but also the one person in the top 16 that handed him a loss in Swimmy Leone. However, Swimmy also took losses to Couch and Scratch Dragon, so someone is going to have their revenge by the end of this. <laughs> For Team Cave Bahamut, Rivers McCown took The Fizz, Supremacy, and Night Dew. There's a battle brewing as the old school king has decided to bring three grinders into his home to do battle. There's no assurance of value there, but there is an assurance of close matches as all four have had ups and downs throughout this league. And finally, for Team Troya, 
Nirm took Elmagus, Fred Coughlin, and Penguinator. Wait, 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 hang on. I thought the clerics banned fistfighting beyond Troya Bar. Nirm pulled together a group of death on the first two picks alone, and Penguinator falling to the last pick will give us four favorites to win the league clashing earlier than expected. Now, with those groups together, and unlike at the round of 32 where each participant played in four different matches for up to four points each, in the round of 16, the last place finisher for each of the two matches will be eliminated. Only the top eight will continue forward to the final day. So stay tuned, because the first match is coming up soon on RPG Limit Break. Vitasia, it has been an honor to share the desk with you for my final episode. Wait, you're, you're leaving? Where are you going? I've been reassigned as the Interdimensional Special Correspondent, and I'm off to report on events from every corner of the universe. Right now, there is a planet currently suffering from some apocalyptic tectonic changes caused by Clown Satan, and somebody needs to cover that story. The people deserve to know. Well, good luck to you, Muppets. And now, a fond remembrance of Muppets in Space. Muppets in space, how sweet each sound, each time that he would speak.